2 Samuel chapter 6. Probably about 20 verses, y'all, so bear with me. Verse 1, again, David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. And he arose and went with all the people who were with him to Baal, Judah, Kiriath, Jerim, to bring up from there the ark of God, which is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, who sits enthroned above the cherubim. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. And Uzzah and Ahio, sons of Abinadab, drove the new cart. Not everything new is God. And they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill with the ark of God. And Ahio went before the ark. And David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord with all their might, with songs, lyres, harps, tambourines, castanets, and cymbals. And when they came to Nacon's threshing floor, Uzzah put out his hand to the, to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen stumbled and shook it. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and God smote him there for touching the ark. And he died there by the ark of God. David was grieved and offered and offended because the Lord had broken forth upon Uzzah. And that place is called Perez Uzzah, the breaking forth upon Uzzah to this day. David was afraid of the Lord that day and said, how can the ark of the Lord come to me? In other words, I don't want it. <laughs> if it's killing folk. So David was not willing to take the ark of the Lord to him into the city of David, but he took it aside into the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. And the ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, for three months. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his and it was told King David, the Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that belongs to him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with rejoicing. And when those who bore the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a fatling. And David danced before the Lord with all his might clad in the linen ephod, a priest's upper garment. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. As the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michal, Saul's daughter, David's wife, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. They brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in place inside the tent which David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. When David had finished offering the burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name and presence of the Lord of hosts and distributed among all of them, all the people, the whole multitude of Israel, both men and women, to each a cake of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins. So all the people departed each to his house. Everybody got some. Then David returned to bless his household. And his wife, Michal, daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today who dropped it like it's hot. Oh, <laughs> that's not what it says. Who stripped himself of his kingly robes and uncovered himself in the eyes of his servants, maids as one of the worthless fellow shamelessly uncovers himself. She said a lot, didn't she? David said to Michal, it was before the Lord who chose me above your father and all his house, your brothers, uncles, everybody related to you. God jumped over them to get to me, to appoint me as prince over all Israel, the people of the Lord, therefore will I make merry and pure enjoyment before the Lord. So you got it twisted. You thought I'm out there dancing for the people. You thought the intimacy you saw was me and the women. You don't recognize real spiritual intimacy. Your discernment is off, honey. 
because my, my worship was unto God, and you don't understand my worship. I will be still more lightly esteemed than this and will humble and lower myself in my own sight and yours. But by the maids you mentioned, I will be held in honor. And Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no child to that day of her death. Barren. Mm. Can't produce nothing. So I, I picked a little, I was, I was trying to be cute this year, you know. I picked a little sermon title. It simply says Raiders of the Lost Ark. I'm just, you know, hey. It's Impact and Chill. I'm, I'm Indiana Jones. I grew up in the 80s, you know, hey. So we're not going to do anything deep and elaborate. I'm not going to come up with the, the blessing of the house. Skipped that house and went to this house. I'm not going to do any of that stuff, right? But I want to get into the message because I think the meat of the message is important. But there's so much alongside on the plate with just the meat of the message that I think is important for you to get as well. Amen. So you have to understand the story. In this story, thank you so much. In this story, David, King David, noticed that the Ark of the Covenant was not in his house. And he went to go get the Ark of the Covenant because the Ark of the Covenant had been with the enemy for so long. So he went to Abinadab's house to get the Ark of the Covenant. But before he got the Ark of the Covenant, he figured he would handle it differently. He had his cart constructed and had these oxen there to pull the ark. And he did it in a way that God did not ordain. If we look back in the book of Exodus, we see when God gave instruction to Moses on building the ark of the covenant. There was staves that went through rings that were wood and gold. I don't have time to deal with that. I wish I could. But gold on the outside and wood on the inside, which denotes Christ, which he is divine and human at the same time. Not half and half, but all in all. So when they constructed the Ark of the Covenant and they constructed the rings, which mean covenant, and they constructed the poles that went on the shoulders of the priest, so the priest would carry the Ark of the Covenant Every place they went up until this point, it was born by the people. It was a connection between the people of God and God. It was never meant to be put upon a cart. But can I tell you, sometimes we get so unacquainted with God that we don't know how to handle him. It has been so much time between the last time you touched God that you don't even know how to handle God. Have you ever been in that place where you were in the rhythm of church but not in a relationship with God? Sometimes you can be in the rhythm of attending church and attending church, but you never really touch God. And so many churches open their doors every single Sunday and preaching goes forth, but nobody touches God. So there's no real power going on in our churches because nobody is really touching the place that has all power, which is God. So we see God look at this situation where David has ordered a new cart constructed because he felt it was easier for somebody else to carry it than us. Because we have to make worship convenient. Because it's about our convenience, not God's worship. Oh, see, now y'all want to back up a little bit because now you, where's he going? Well, you know, in the old church, they didn't really have chairs. Chairs are convenient for us because we want to sit. Even in the presence of God, we still choose to sit. Because it's about us and not God. I'm not saying all the conveniences because we're not going to go through this debate on whether we should have microphones and lights and all of this stuff. I'm not saying that. But if at the end of the day, God is not the top of the list, let me start back wrong. He should never be the top of the list. He should be the paper that the list is written on. So 
so if the reason why God did, does everything is because he's trying to show how the Ark of the Covenant is a type of Christ and it will foreshadow who Christ is. So we know that the Ark of the Covenant is gold represents the divinity and wood which represents Jesus' humanity. And the Bible says that the tabernacle and everything in it, the furnishings in it, were all supposed to foreshadow Jesus coming, the shadow and the types of Jesus, right? So we understand that. I can go deeper than that, but I won't today. We have to understand that God was showing us the relationship between man and Christ. So if God is showing us the relationship between man and Christ in the Old Testament to foreshadow what it should be in the New Testament, then we know that there is only one way to Christ, one way to God, and that's through Christ. So anything else, the Bible says you're a thief and a robber. If you go any other way than the way God said, you're a thief and a robber. So as they put this Ark of the Covenant on the cart and they're dragging it into the city of David because they're going through the ceremony, of the ceremony, the tradition, they made a new tradition. And as the oxen are stumbling along because they weren't built to carry the presence, the Ark tried to come off of the cart and Uzzah, takes his dirty hands and places it on the Ark of the Covenant to force it back on the cart. And God struck him dead because he took his dirty, filthy hands and directly touched the presence of God. Even when Moses met God at a bush, God told him to take off his shoes because he's standing on holy ground. The, the same ground that God stood on, it wasn't even God, but, but to have the audacity to put your hands where you should never put your hands and force a situation. God struck him dead. But here's how David perceived it, which his perception was wrong. He said, God breached it. No, David, you breached the contract. You know God's heart and you know God's ordinances because you said, David, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You didn't search your heart. You made this cart and you made it about you. We have to be careful about making church about us. And forcing it to be about us. Because you're smarter than God. David thought he was smarter than God. Well, then, you know, that was old, old, old Testament. This is kind of old, but this ain't not as old as that Old Testament. That Old Testament, they had to carry it, but we can make it more convenient. we we'll work around you. I know I can't get everybody here in their priestly garments, so we're just going to get the ox to carry it. Uzziah loses his life. Ohio is in awe. David panics and says, we're dropping it off at this house right here. Oh, who, whose house is this? <laughs> Where did we break down that? I don't call AAA. It broke down right here. Push it up in that joker's driveway. Push it up in here. Obed Edom wakes up like, wait a second. <laughs> wait a minute. Where did this come from? And David goes home without the presence, without the ark of the presence. Okay, that's another name of the ark of the covenant. Without the ark of his presence, of God's presence, he goes home and leaves the presence of God with Obed-Edom. And then we think that's the end of the story. Then it goes on. We go on a couple months. And word gets back to David, the king. Obey Edom's house. 
He said, well, who died? <laughs> right? Could you, could you imagine? It doesn't say that in the Bible. I'm taking literary, you know, liberty here. I can see him saying, who died? Because the last time we saw this, people were, were dying. He said, no, king. Obed Eden's house has done a 360 or a 180. It's done a 180. What does 180 mean? It's a complete turnaround. What happened? Not only did he get blessed, but everybody in his house and all the things in his house were blessed. So wait, 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 hold, hold, hold it. What, what happened? He said, for the last mo- couple of months, as the presence of the Lord sat in his house, because he made a place for it. Obed-Edom made a place in his home for the presence of God. He esteemed God's glory and presence in his house because he realized that at the top, what we call the mercy seat is the seat of God and God sat on his throne. And if God was going to sit on the throne and he had the throne of God, he was going to place the throne of God in a place to be envied in his house. So whatever he had to move out of the way had to move out of the way. Can I ask you a question? What are you moving out of the way for God? When was the last time you moved anything? When was the last time you moved anything to place God where he deserved to be. If, if, that's, if that's the big screen TV, it, it, the big screen TV is going in the closet because God needs to have a place where he celebrated. So at Obed-Edom's house, they made a way for the ark. They allowed the ark to have its place of honor and glory in his house. Obed-Edom didn't have a title. Obed-Edom didn't have influence. Obed-Edom didn't have money. Obed-Edom went down like that. But if you look at his story and his ark from the moment that he received the ark, his life changed. His life changed. And not just his life, everybody in the house. His whole household was blessed. How does that spill out? I mean, that means you're blessed when you go, blessed when you come, blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed at your job, blessed with your family, blessed in the fields where you're working at, blessed in your ideas. Everything that you produce is blessed. Somebody yell everything. Could you imagine, just take a moment, just take a moment, close your your beautiful eyes, close your beautiful eyes, and and just think about what would happen if God just started blessing everything in your house. Every kid of yours, blessed. Your spouse, blessed. Your mind, blessed. You get to your job and you blessed at your job. You you go on the freeway. Why is the freeway so light today? Because you on it. Why? Why? why, Everything you do, God is breathing. God is breathing on. For days, not for hours. Consecutive blessings. Every day, a brand new mercy meets me. Every day, a brand new blessing greets me because of the presence of God sitting in the midst of my house. And David gets word of this. He don't even hesitate. (laughs) He's he's the repo man now. He moved from being King David to the repo man. He's like, wait a second. Everything... In that house is blessed. Yes, sir, everything in the house is blessed. Everything in that house is blessed. Yes, everything in the house is blessed. Mother-in-law blessed. Even the mother-in-law blessed. Wow. No hesitation. There's repentance that went forth. 
He said, I got to go back and get it. Here's what he does. He takes the priests, puts them in their garments. They, they take the staves, which are the poles that go through the rings. They lift it up because now it's time for the people to carry the burden. Oh, oh man, God just whipped me. Can I tell you how God just whipped me? I mean, he whipped us all. I'm going to tell you how he whipped us all. We want all these new carts to fund the church. We got to find new ways to fund the church. How can we fund the church? How can we fund the church? Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't have other ways to fund it, but, but I said this last week, and I'm going to repeat it. Because if the people don't ever feel the burden, then how are you touching God's heart? If your money never touches God's altar. Because where a man's treasure is, there is his heart. So if my money never meets to alter, my heart never meets to alter. But you have to first have an altered heart before you take your treasure to the altar. So David said, I got to do this right. So not only did David go back to Obed-Edom, and I, I, I really want to know what Obed-Edom was saying. He might not have said anything to the king because he, he didn't want to risk decapitation. But I guess, I, I bet you the conversation in his head went like this. Y'all probably can find me, right? right? Y'all probably think the same thing. I can't believe this. First of all, first of all, people, you pulled this big old Ark of the Covenant up to my garage and then you left without even asking me could I keep it so if I decide I recognize the power of God the glory of God I respected the glory of God I bring the glory of God in my house to set up in a place of honor and for three months nobody called me you ain't sent me no money on how to take care of it. You ain't sent me no pledge to clean it. I did all of this work, and I'm blessed. And now, because somebody put it out on Twitter, <laughs> that the Lord is blessing my house, you decide, King David, to come get your stuff. It wasn't yours yesterday, but because I knew how to honor it, now it's yours. She used to be your wife. She used to be your wife, but now if you got divorced from her, and, and I got her now, and I did something with her, now she is a 10, and now you a 2. And now you want to come back and slide in her DMs. On the other side of it, ladies, you didn't want him because he wasn't working. He wasn't working because he got laid off. Now you don't want him. He ain't nothing. He just like his daddy. So now you leave him. He gets a beautiful woman, younger than you, smarter than you, more than you. And she ministers to the king inside of him. He goes back to school, gets his degree. He goes and gets a job making six figures. He's doing all of these things with their family. Now, all of a sudden, here you come. Shooting pictures. Trying to shoot your shot. But you did nothing with it when it was in your house. You always wanted more. You wanted different. You wanted better. But you could have had better if you invested in better. The grass is greener where you water it. If you water the grass, it'll be greener. So, David, not you, not, not, not a ninja 
want to come to my house and take the glory. I bet you that's the conversation he had in his head. He wouldn't have said it. It wasn't in the Bible, but I just know people. Because I would have felt the same way. I would have felt the type of way, oh, yes, King David, yes, yes, I understand protocol, praise Jesus. But in the back of my mind, I'm rising, fretting, 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 fretting. In Hebrew, right, in the original Greek. <laughs> you alpha. So they carry it on their arms. And what I love about it is, then David says, every six paces, kill, sacrifice, give an offering of an ox. Could have been goats. Could have been doves, but they chose oxen. Why? Because David would never again put this over God. He said, I'm going to kill the thing that almost killed my relationship with God. Not, we're going to have these oxen walk alongside of us. No, I need to end this. Because as long as it's lingering there, it's, t it's a temptation. God said, sometimes you got to kill the thing. Not literally kill, we not going oh, out killing nobody, y'all. Because I know y'all will be like, the pastor told me. On TikTok. I need euphoria. Pastor tell me. It's like, no. That's not what I'm saying. You have to put an end to the thing that almost put an end to you. Every six paces, they made a sacrifice. Every six paces, another sacrifice, another offering, another offering, another offering, another offering unto God. Because God, I'm sorry. Because I, got, I can't take another step. I can't take more than six steps without repenting and remembering how I treated you. So now I need to take these steps and be concerned about how I treat you, how I honor you. And never again will I let another ox get in the way of me touching you. Of me touching you. Y'all missed that. The oxen were in the way. They, they were in the way of the intimacy between God and man. I'm telling you, whatever it is, whatever it is that is holding you back from connecting to God, end it. Whoever it is, block them. So the only time I'm going to touch this ox is to kill one. He gets to the outskirts. Now, can you imagine that? Now, he is anticipating the arrival of the presence of God in his house. And I don't know about you. When I start anticipating a move of God, when I start anticipating God doing something big for me, I get excited. There is more bounce in my walk. There is more pep in my step. When I start thinking about what God is about to release, and David is sacrificing all of these oxen. And David is walking and marching the presence of God back to his house, to the city of David, to the tent of God, to the tabernacle. He is marching it. He is marching it back. And he is getting more and more excited. And from afar off, his wife sees him dancing. And misconstrues the situation because she's not really looking at him. She's looking at the people looking at him. She's looking at how the people are looking at him. They never looked at my daddy like that. They never looked at my, my why he acting like this. It don't take all that. You doing too much. And she is watching him, watch this, from a distance. She was too disconnected to be in agreement.
she was too distant to be in agreement. You can't be in agreement with people that you're not connected to. And she was not connected to David. She did not have the same appetite for the presence of God because she was birthed from a different leadership style. She could not fathom what it meant for God's presence to be in her house because that's not how she grew up. That's not how she grew up. She grew up with rules and regulations, not grace and mercy. Because she was so disconnected from her husband, she could not celebrate how he celebrated. Because she looked at her husband as competition, not to compliment. And when marriage is not about complimenting each other, but competing with each other, there's rivalry where there's supposed to be revelation. There's arguments when there's supposed to be agreement. And so she couldn't see it the way David saw it because she was not connected to the heart of David. And so she watches David dancing and she's not happy and she's not dancing because if she was connected to her husband and if she was connected to her heart, when she saw him dancing, she would have ran out there and said, baby, it's time for me to dance with you. But because others celebrated her husband more than she did, she got offended. And if you did for your folk what other people would do for your folk, then you would still have folk. But how dare you say you love somebody and never celebrate who you say you love and then get attitude when somebody else celebrates them for the portion of them that they know. You know all of them. They know a portion. And they're going to celebrate 10 times better than you over the portion when you know what the whole is. And they celebrate with David. They're in the streets dancing with David because they see how David is happy again. She sees his happiness and is threatened by it. Instead of running out there dancing with her husband, shouting with her husband, shouting with her man, she in the house getting the attitude. Probably running her mouth with somebody else because you know how that go. You know David out there. <laughs> he out there. You see them girls out there looking at him? You see them, them maids and stuff out there looking at him? Girl, you right. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. She working herself up because all she's doing is talking. She in her own head getting more and more angry. So when David comes in, she says, oh, king. How vile you are in the presence of these maids disrobing yourself. You dance not your clothes for all of this. What, what are you doing it for? He should have known immediately that it wasn't a what. It was a who. I, I'm not doing it for people. I'm doing it for God. I'm not doing it because the people demand it. I'm doing it because God demands it. I'm praising God in his presence because I finally got his presence back. Now, baby, you might not understand it. You might not even buy it. But it's supersonic. You, listen. You might not, <laughs> you might not, come on, but I need you to understand that this ain't about us. It's about God. You're mad because they see me dancing and because my robe slipped a little bit. Now, all of a sudden, you care. All of a sudden, you care, but you care about the wrong things. I finally got the ark 
this close to the house. And, and I made a pit stop, baby. I made a pit stop because I needed to let people know that if you connected to me, if it blessed the house of Obed-Edom, if I bring it into the city, it's not blessing one house. It's blessing every, every house. It's a city blessing. Woo! Where are my city girls at? Where, where? It's a city blessing. God is about to show up and change the whole game. And then David started blessing folks. He started blessing people cake and, and everything. He just, just giving people stuff, giving people stuff. Because he is so grateful that his generosity went to a whole other level. He just blessing folks. And they walking away blessed. And they're blessed. They're blessed to be a blessing. And those that are blessed are dancing. And those that are blessed are grateful. And those that are blessed are celebrating David. But Michael, because she didn't travel with her husband, she was not a partaker of the ministry. She was a partaker of the misery. And so when David comes home, she's tripping. And David only took so much of it because I like David. He's like, wait a second. You tripping because I'm dancing because we finally got the presence of God back. After a drought for the last couple of months. We finally got the fountain of blessings back. And you tripping and you calling me out. But I'm dancing for God who chose me over your daddy. So you tripping because, oh, now, now it really comes out what you've been holding back. So you never told me you had these daddy issues. So now all of a sudden, now you're telling me you got these issues with me and your daddy now. Now there's a problem? But God chose me over your daddy and all your brothers? Because you have brothers and chose me over all of them and their sons and you. No, 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 no. If you think I'm dirty now, if you thought I was dancing before your comment, I was dropping it before. I got some shimmies you ain't seen. You thought that I that I was I was a nasty boy before. You ain't seen nothing yet, baby. You thought the last time you saw me, I, you know, I, I was Jerry Lewis and all that kind of stuff. No, I'm about to. I'm old school. I'm pop locking. I'm rerunning. I'm, I'm, I'm MC Hammer. I'm doing it all. Roger Rabbit. I'm doing it all. I'm water. I'm doing I, whatever I got to do. You're going to miss me with all this criticism. She's like, you got, you vile, King, you vile. You, you thought a Negro was vile. You thought I was crazy. But now you done warmed me up. Now you got me where I really want to go for it. And whether you like it or not, I'm not performing for you 
those maids that you are worried about, they're going to honor me unlike you. Why? Because C-sharp. Because the presence of the Lord is here. That's what David was dancing for. The presence of the Lord is here. I feel it in the atmosphere. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. Wait. The power of the Lord is here. See, you got to know, David understood the assignment. He understood his place was to put back in place the presence of the Lord. And he said, if we're ever to walk in the blessing and the full manifestation of God again, we have to kill whatever kept us from it and embrace it fully. So yeah, the ark was lost. We had to raid Obed-Edom's house to get it back. And now that we got it back, we have built a place for it. And this place for it is a place of honor because everything that's in God is in our house. All of the power, all of the strength, all of the anointing, it is here. So when I just gave you a little brief musical interlude and said the presence of the Lord is here, it wasn't just because Brian Cage said it. It's because David demonstrated it. I'm going to push on you today. I need to push on y'all today. I need to push on y'all today because I need you to know something. I need you to know that until you re-esteem and re-establish who God is in your life, you'll be on the outside looking in. You'll be just like one of David's servants who was watching what God was doing for months. He saw the reports and heard the reports about Obed-Edom and his household increasing day to day to day to day to day to day to day and said, King David, we missing it. You got position, you got a family, but you don't have the presence. Some of you in this room today got a position, got family, got money, but no presence.